Okay. We're starting with the uh, the G-Made R1 Rock Buggy. And uh, I can give you a hint for the most part, buying the almost ready to run is useless because you pretty much got to take it all apart to get the motor and everything else in. You'll have some parts you don't have to take off, but uh, the one thing I really don't like about G-Made is that they use Phillips screws. So as I take something out, I'm going to get my button box here, and any three millimeter screw that I take off, I'm going to replace with the stainless steel um, three millimeter hex so I don't have to mess with that. So the thing we're trying to do first is, is get the motor in, of course. I have a RC four-wheel drive 65 turn motor I'm going to put in here. As you can see, the transmission's way in, you know, inside this cage. No way to get into it, so you're going to have to drop the skid plate and uh, take transmission out. Because I don't believe I can even get the transmission out if I don't take skid plate. I can't just take the tranny, I don't believe. So I'm going to drop this skid plate, get the transmission out, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay. Got the bottom links off. I'm pretty sure. Not exactly sure, but... Yeah, that'll come out now. I think. Nope, I do believe we're going to have to undo the transmission. Like I said, any of these screws that I take off with these Phillips heads, they all seem to be three millimeter. I'm going to put back stainless steel hex because I'm not going to play with this all the time. And this is probably why these this skid plate has ribs like it does. So it leaves room for them Phillips head screws. I don't know why they haven't converted over. Now they do, if you buy the kit for this, I would recommend to go ahead and get the hex head. Here's your skid plate. Right. It's got that same crazy. It'll put the nuts and bolts in the transmission like the uh, sawback does. To find some nuts and bolts, but I believe that's the one for the skid plate. All right, well, like I said, I got I got more, so I'm gonna. Well, I guess you do get a little benefit from the almost ready to run, unless you don't have to take it apart, you know, put all this together. But I'd almost rather had the kit and got rid of all these uh, Phillips screws. And I did notice the shocks don't have no oil in them or anything, so you pretty much almost got to take this kit apart anyway. So it's kind of silly, but... All right, well, give me a minute to get to my next step, and I'll be right back. Okay, one other thing I noticed, when I got this thing it's put together, you see the grease is unopened and your shock oil is unopened and stuff. There's no oil in the shocks, no grease in the transmission, which leads me to believe there's probably none in the portal axles either, so I have to take them apart. So you'd almost be better off with your kit because if you didn't know any better and you just got this and started running it you'd have no grease in the tranny none in the portal axle and you'll just wear it out real fast so I got a little spray white lithium so I don't have to 
take this whole thing apart. Brace it up pretty good. That's a little better. All right, I'll be right back. Let me get this motor on. I'll be right back. Okay. We got a transmission in there. Well, we got the motor in the transmission, excuse me. And I went ahead and used some of the paste, white lithium. Because that spray was just a little too loose. And this 60 turn motor, boy. Woo! Takes a lot to turn it. Now, I already broke this motor in. Water broke it in on another vehicle I had. I believe I had this on the... Uh, what did I have this on? I think I had this on the Dingo. And it was just... A little too slow for me for the dingo this is more of a crawler motor so uh so now we're going to put this transmission back in and like i said i'm going to change these screws to uh to some uh hex heads and we'll go from there all right so give me a second to figure out what size these are and i'll be right back Okay, we got the transmission back on the plate, and as you can see, I've switched to heavier three Miller hex heads than these damn little Phillips heads. Now we couldn't quite get the transmission out before, so I'm thinking if I don't have it connected to the drive shaft, we spread this thing a little bit. do this in a different direction because I got to put these little nuts in there and they like to fall out so give me a minute I'm going to figure out what size these screws are and then uh, change these over to hex also so I'll be right back <coughs> all right the more I mess with this I'm not becoming a big fan of this almost ready to run like all my screws are loose on top of everything else are these damn uh, Phillips heads but everywhere they look everywhere there's a Phillips screw from I guess it could probably from this thing riding around in the box or whatever but uh Everything's loose. You can pretty much hold everything with your fingers and spin it. So, so here we are with almost ready to run that I got to take completely apart and rebuild. But the kit wasn't available. That's why I normally buy kits. Kit wasn't available, so I went ahead and got the ATR. But I, I don't, I don't really see the appeal because you got to take it apart to get the motor in. You got to take it apart to get the shocks and oil in the shocks. Just seems like a whole lot of disassemble and noticing the grease didn't open. And there was no grease in the transmission. I guarantee you there's no grease in this portal axle and in the portal part or the hub. So I might as well take it all apart anyway. There you go. All right, I'll be right back. Okay. Well, we got the motor in. And we got the 
bottom links, the outer links back on, the lower links. And I've changed the screws to the hex head. And uh, I might need to add a washer later. I don't know. We'll see how heavy these balls are. And uh, I changed the screws down here on the transmission also. So I feel a little better that I got a few hex heads in here so far. So uh, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure every time I take something out, I'm going to replace it with the hex head screws. These Phillips head screws are just a damn nightmare. They, they'll drive you crazy. And uh, let's get this a little closer. So, but we're coming along. We got, like I said, we got the motor in. And uh, I'd take the body panels off, and they were all Phillips head screws too. So I wasn't planning on keeping these body panels anyway. They're just little, little teeny things. And uh, what I'm thinking of doing is I got some monster drink cans, and I'm going to cut them open and uh, see if I can make some panels that look pretty good. And if not, I'll just put these back on. But. Uh, but I guess the next thing I'm going to do, since I knew the transmission didn't have any grease in it, is uh, I'm going to open up these portal axles. It doesn't sound like they got anything in them either. And double check this and put some grease on these so these don't get all burned up. Because these things are expensive, so you don't want to have to redo these. Take this disc cover. Sorry about that little cutoff. Battery on my GoPro went dead. As I was saying, these things don't sound like they got any grease in them at all. So I'm going to take the diff cover off, grease this up. I guess I'm going to have to take the portal axle part right here. I might leave these Phillips heads. I don't, I'm not sure if I have any um, smaller hex heads that will fit in there, but if I can, I'm going to change them too. Um, I know I don't have enough of these. I'll have to put this back in with the Phillips head screws, but neither one of these feel like they got any grease. And looking at these hubs that turn, I don't see any kind of shine on it, so I'm pretty sure they don't have grease. So let me pop these open and see if they're greased up, and we'll see what we can do. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Okay. We got the last screw out of the portal axle, so let's see if these. Nope. Dry as a bone. Look at there, not a thing on it. So it's a good thing <coughs> I opened it up. <coughs> um, so, definitely, if you buy a ready to run, it's a shame that they do this because uh, you would think that you're. Maybe your inexperienced RCers won't know that they need to uh, grease this up. And then they're going to run this thing dry and eat it up. Which is a shame because there's absolutely nothing on here. I'm going to imagine that you don't need a whole lot. you got to make sure your bearings get back in there. There we go. Spin that around a little. We'll open it up one more time and make sure everything got around. Yeah, there we go. See, now that's what you should look like. So, all right. So let me get the screws back in here. Like I said, Phillips again. I'm going to see if I got um, some uh, hex head that'll uh, that I can replace that with. Let me see what size this is. Yeah, I got to get me a demagnetizer. Just about every screw I have is magnetized. It says 15.3, so I think a, 
15 or 16 millimeter will work. So let me see if I have something to fix this in my collection of uh, stainless steel here and I'll be right back. Okay. Well, what I had since it was like 15.5, I went ahead and grabbed 16s. So I got a little bit of screw hanging off the back of here, but that's not going to matter. I'd rather have the stainless steel than the uh, the Phillips head. And I'm going to pop this hub on even without a pin and just to make sure that I don't have any problems with my tire. Oh no, there ain't gonna be no problem with that whatsoever. <clears throat> so I'm gonna finish this off with some of the stainless steel, replace them real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, well we got this with the stainless steel on there now, and there's grease in that axle. And the funny part is, you put your thumb on here, and you don't feel any vibration. You put it on this side, and it vibrating. And the center's vibrating, which just tells you everything was dry. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and change out this other portal axle real quick. And then um, put some grease in it. Put some stainless steel in there. And I'll be right back. Okay. Well, we got both of the portal part of the axle done. I'm going to check the center hub. Yeah, and it's dry as a bone, too. So uh, there's not quite as many gears going on there, but still, you don't want anything dry. So we'll grease this up pretty good. So to keep the noise down. Almost hard to believe that they go through and put everything together and not put the grease in there. You gotta put an emphasis on the almost ready to run as in not even close. Alright so we got our oil in here and we'll just put this all back together <clears throat> and I'll do the front axle the same way and that'll be it for this video it's probably getting a little long and uh, I'm sure there'll be more to come I'm gonna actually put the Phillips screws back in this because I don't have any hex that small and uh, hopefully I don't have to get in and out of this there's not a whole lot of moving parts in here just the, the two gears the locker and the um, whatever the other one's called I can't remember so I'm going to get this back together and then I'll do the other axle. But like I said, that'll be it for this one. And you can really tell now there ain't, the vibration just went away since it's no longer dry. So that'll be it for part one, I guess, of this. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. So please like, please comment, please share. And uh, I'll see you next time. All right, bye.